What's up everyone? Sam here from bitebybyte.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve the longest increasing subsequence problem. And on February 3rd, I'm teaching a free masterclass called the Four Horsemen of the Whiteboarding Apocalypse at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Totally free. Go to bitebybyte.com slash masterclass to sign up if you haven't already. In this video, we're going to talk about finding the longest consecutive sequence in an unsorted array. So let's take a look at this problem real quick. We have an example input here and the longest consecutive sequence. Remember, it's just consecutive numbers, but they don't have to be in order in the array. So our longest consecutive sequence here is one, two, three, four. And so the length of our sequence is four. Right, and so let's go ahead and quickly define what our actual function definition is because we want to make sure that we're doing that. So our function definition, in this case, we can see that we're taking in some sort of array, which looks like an integer array, and then we're going to be returning a singular value, right? Remember, it's super important, as always, that we're making sure that we're returning the right thing. And so in this case, we're not returning the actual set of numbers, we're just returning the length. And so we're going to have some function that takes in an array of integers and then it's going to return a single integer. Right? Pretty straightforward. This one's not too complicated in that front. So let's go and look at how we would actually code this up. So first of all, hopefully let's look at a brute force solution and hopefully it's pretty obvious how we would approach this in a brute force way. There are really two sort of approaches that we can take. And so the one is that we can basically say, you know, for each number, let me see if it, if the consecutive one is contained somewhere in the array, right? And so we could say like, okay, is, we see hundreds in here, is 101 in here, is 102 in here, etc. cetera. Uh, we, could that, we would then go to four, we would say, okay, is five in here, six? No, we would go to 200, we would go, and then we would end up in one, and so we would look at one, and we would say, okay, is two in here? And so we would iterate over the whole thing, and we would find two, and then we would iterate over the whole thing, looking for the next number, which would be three. So we'd iterate over and find three. Then we'd iterate and find four. And then we would iterate and we would not find five, but we would have found the, you know, the four numbers, right? So that's one approach we can take. Real quick, what would the time complexity of that be? Well, we are iterating over our entire array potentially four n times. But then even worse than that, like for each of these numbers, we might be iterating over the array n times, right? So if each number has a consecutive, like a, is part of a series of consecutive numbers, we're going to be iterating over the whole array. So we're going to get O of n because we have O of n different items. And then for each item in the array, we could be doing up to O of n squared work. Right, because we could be iterating over the array n times for each of those items. And remember, this is like obviously this doesn't exactly happen, right? Because that's like, um, you know, there's not two, consec two different consecutive sequences that are the length of the whole array. But remember that we're just looking at the worst case complexity here. And so we're going to still end up with this times O of n squared which is going to be equal to O of n cubed. And so again, this is the worst case. This is an upper bound. It's not actually going to be quite that bad, but it's good when we're doing the big O complexity, we want to just establish what is that highest upper bound and not, we're not so worried about like being super, super precise. And so that is an approach that would work. And the question is, can we do better? So, you know, this is one of those cases where we can, you know, our best conceivable runtime that we're looking at is going to be that we have to at least iterate over everything once, right? So the worst case scenario, we have to iterate over everything once. And so we're never going to do better than O of n time complexity, but can we do better than O of n cubed? So like we had O of n cubed before. When we're, and then if we look at the problem, we're looking at consecutive sequences, right? And so we know specifically in the problem it defines that our input is not sorted, and we can see that here. But what if our input was sorted, right? Whenever we have an input that's not sorted, that's a good question we can ask is what would happen if we sorted it? Would it make our lives easier? And so let's look at like what this would look like if we sorted it instead. So we'd have one, two, three, four, 100, 200. And now you're like, 
oh, that's pretty obvious, right? Like it's, it would be pretty easy for us to find the conse all the consecutive subsequences in here because they're all gonna be next to each other and they're actually gonna be in consecutive order. And so in this case, we would just look through and we could basically for each one look at the you know, previous or the next value and say, is it one more or one less than, <coughs> than our current value? And that would tell us whether those two are consecutive and we can just keep building up, right? So I think that the approach here is pretty obvious. It is a good thing to code up and to practice because it's a little bit trickier than you might think to code up. So, you know, especially if you're struggling on the coding side of things, I definitely would say, you know, and with, this is true with all these things, anything, if you're struggling on a specific area, like with the uh, coding uh, or with the problem solving, you want to really drill that and like get extra practice. So anytime you see different solutions or different approaches, try them on for size. And that's a great opportunity for you to just get a little bit more practice in. But in this case, what would our complexity be? Well, we have to sort it. And so when we sort it, we're going to have an O of n log n. And then to actually find all the consecutive arrays, we just have to iterate over the whole thing. So that's going to be plus O of n because they're not, because they're like consecutive steps and not um, over, they're not like nested steps. So we don't, you know, we're gonna we're gonna sort it first, and then after we sort the whole thing, then we iterate over the whole thing once. So we add them together, and then that means that we end up with, you know, this one, this O of n goes away because it's a smaller order um, piece, and so we end up with just n log n. And if we think about this in terms of the bud notation or the bud optimization, what we basically did here was we looked at this and we said, hey, we are doing all this unnecessary work, right? We're doing all this unnecessary work because we're iterating over the whole thing again and again. And we don't have to do that because if we just sorted it, then we wouldn't have to do that again and again. And so we've made this optimization using our bud uh, technique. But then the question is, can we do better than this? And so now, and this is true with the bud technique as well, is that what we'll often see is that, you know, we might, we might apply the bud um, optimization like multiple times, right? If we, because we might realize that like, oh, I made this one optimization, but now I'm running into a different issue. And so now our best is O of n log n. But the question is, can we do this in O of n time? Can we do this in, or can we do this in better than O of n log n time, which pretty much is going to be O of n time, because that's like our next most efficient. And so the question, let's look at this and let's think about like, what is, so first of all, what is the bottleneck here? The bottleneck is obviously the sorting, right? Because the time complexity is being limited by the fact that we have to sort the input. And so if we want to do better than that, we're going to have to eliminate the sorting. And so this is why sometimes, you know, it can be helpful to also brainstorm multiple approaches up front. So like we talked about that other approach where we were iterating over it multiple times and we talked about the sorting. And so with the sorting, you know, and with, with both of these, like, let's think about what's actually happening. So what I want to know essentially, and what's slowing me down is the fact that when I look at a number, so when I look at this, I have to iter I have to either sort it or I have to iterate over the entire thing to determine whether that next value, whether 101 is in my array at all, right? I have to do O of N work just to figure out whether that next value is in the array. And if I found 101, I would have to do all that work again. And if I found 102, I would have to do all that work again. And so I'm doing all of this unnecessary work because I don't know whether that next value is in the array. And so what would be an easy way for us to determine whether that next value is in the array? Well, a simple solution would be that we could just add all the values to some sort of set or something, right? Because if we added all the values to a set, then we could look up in constant time whether a specific value is in the set. And we know like when, we have, when we're at 100, we know we're looking for 101. We know what that next value is because we want it to be consecutive. And so with a set, we could do this really easily. And so let's think about what that might look like. And I also want you to like, you know, be thinking about, you know, how is this, how am I using the bud optimization and like, what am I looking at? I'm looking at like, where is that inefficiency and do I know anything that I could use to improve the efficiency where I'm having that issue, right? I'm taking like, what is the most inefficient piece and saying like, how can I optimize that piece? 
And so in this case, we'll add everything to a set. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'll just draw this over here. And I'll do it in order, not that it really matters. And so now what we do, let's look at our algorithm. We go to 100, we say, okay, is 101 in the set? No, so we continue on to the next one. We say four, okay, is five in the set? No, continue on to the next one. 200, is 100 in the set? No, we continue on, or is one, 201 in the set? No, we continue on to the next one. One, is two in the set? Yes. And so we're gonna, you know, we're basically keeping track in our head of like how long this um, consecutive sequence is. So we get two, well we get one and then two, and then we found two, so is three in the set? Yes, it is. So we add three. Is four in the set? Yes. So we add four. Then is five in the set? No. And so we end up with, you know, our sort of current best solution, which is like four. Now we're going to continue on to three. And so, uh, and to be clear, like this, this piece t could take as much of, as O of n time, right? Like when we found this, if we iterated through all of the numbers in the array, that would take O of n time. And so it's proportional to O of n time. Now we come to the three, and three we look, is four in the set? Yes, so we have three, four. This also takes basically O of n time. And then we have two, and so we find you know two, three, four, which took O of n time. And remember, this is what I was saying again about, it's not, it's like the worst case, so it's not actually literally taking O of n time, or it's not literally taking n time because obviously this is less, all of these are less than n, but in the worst case scenario, it's like proportional to n. And so now what we see here is that <clears throat> the worst case is that for each of, we're, we're iterating over this once, and then for each of these, the worst case is that we have to do O of n work. And so we're getting a time complexity with this of O of n squared, right? because we're basically doing some duplicated work here. And so this is where we're gonna apply the bud strategy optimization again, right? So we have a bet, this is better than the O of N cubed that we had before, but it's not as good as our O of N log N. And so what we wanna do though, is that when I, as soon as I look at this, I see, oh crap, we have duplicated work here because look, we're we're iterating over these two here, we're iterating over these two here, we're iterating over these two here. We're iterating over all of these three in both places. And so that means like, basically I'm looking at these um, partial sequences where I'm not starting with the smallest number. And so it's like, if I'm starting with two, I really, if I look at this, I really don't need to, I know logically I don't need to start with two at all because there's a one and so the one should be part of that sequence and if it isn't then it's not going to be the longest possible sequence and so when I think about this I'm like well how do I eliminate this how do I eliminate this problem right because I just have a problem right now and I want to figure out is there a way I can update my code to eliminate this repetition and so when I look at this I'm like how did I know that you know when I got to the two that I shouldn't continue from there well I knew that because the number directly one consecutively lower than the two was also in my array or is also in my set. And so what I can do here is I can say, okay, rather than just looking at, as I iterate through, rather than just looking at whether the next number is in the set, let me say, um, you know, if the, if the lower number, if either the next, if the, next larger is in the set, but also the next lower is in the set, then that means it's basically, it's not the starting point of my consecutive sequence, right? So if I'm at two, I see that one is in the set already, and so I'm not gonna start counting from two, because I know that the two is gonna be included when I, started, when I start counting from one, and that's gonna make a longer set. And so I'm just gonna be able to ignore all of those, and when we actually do this, we're gonna go through, I'm gonna say 100, there's nothing great, there's not one greater than 100, Four, there's not anything, there's not a five in our set. 200, there's not a 201 in our set. One, there is a two in our set, and there's also no zero. So not only is there a two, but there's nothing below the one that would have been part of this consecutive sequence. And so now I'm gonna start counting from one. I'm gonna say one, 
and then I'm gonna count, I'm gonna get two, then I'm gonna get three, then I'm gonna get four, right? And then when I come to three, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm actually not, there is one greater, there's a four in there, but I don't need this because I see that there's also a two. And so because there's also a two, I'm gonna skip it because I know that three, four is part of two, three, four, right? It's part of that longer consecutive sub sequence. And so I don't need to consider that smaller one because I only need the maximum. And then the same with two. When I get to two, I'm going to look and I'm going to see three is in there, but oh, also one is in there. And so I know that two, three and anything following that, because I'm only looking at the, my code doesn't know, you know, that there's two, three, four. It just knows that there's a three and there's a one. And so as long as there's a, if there's a three, then I could have done two, three, but that's always going to be part of one, two, three. And so I can skip it because I don't need to look at the whole, th I don't need to look at these partial sequences. And so what that leads me to doing is basically saying, I'm going to iterate over this whole thing once. And then when I find any of these sort of potential subsequences, and when I find like this one, I'm going to iterate through these ones again, but I'm going to not be iterating over this whole thing multiple times. So the worst case for all of these additional things is that it's an additional O of N, where it's like, you know, if I had like um, four, two, one, three, five, six, then in this case, I would get to the one and then I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I would have iterated over all of them a second time but it's still just a plus O of N. And so I get O of N to iterate over the whole thing. And I get plus O of N to iterate over the actual sequence when I find it. And when I add these together, we get O of 2N and we remove the constant. So we just get O of N. And so hopefully this makes sense. This is really a great example of one of those problems where if we just apply the bud optimization repeatedly, we can get to that optimal solution. It's just a matter of we need to keep applying it and we need to keep trying to optimize and keep looking for those areas where our solution is suboptimal so that we can make those optimizations. And so that's all I got for this problem. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for sticking with me to the end here. If you enjoyed this and want a ton more from me, go to bitebybite.com slash masterclass, where you can sign up for our Four Horsemen of the Whiteboarding Apocalypse Masterclass that I'm teaching on February 3rd. I really hope to see you there. And if you enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video.